Wow. If I had a nickel for every time I heard that question. <laughs> Adding and subtracting rationals really can be frustrating. I, I absolutely understand. Um, positive and negative number uh, addition and subtraction can really be really be difficult, really be a chore. Um, let me see if I can make it a little easier for you. There's there's sort of two ways to look at it that I've, I've seen help a number of students really sort of crack this, this little problem. One is to, uh, from a conceptual standpoint, just think of adding and subtraction, subtracting rationals as dealing with money. If we think of money, we deal with positive and negative numbers with money all the time. When you get income or when you get money, it's a positive number. It's something that you're adding to the money that you have. When you spend money or when you owe money, it's a negative number. It's an amount of money that's taken away from what you have. So if I say I have the problem um, 2 minus 5, and I want to know what that equals. Well, that's telling me that I started with $2, so I have $2, and I spend $5. Now, if I had $2 and I spent 5 then I must have borrowed money from somewhere, because I only had 2 to start with. If I spent 5 I must owe somebody something. In order to spend $5, when I only started with 2 I must have borrowed 3 So I owe $3 to somebody. So 2 minus 5 is negative 3. If, for instance, I start off by owing somebody four dollars. I have a negative four plus seven, say. Here I started off by owing somebody four dollars, but then I got, or I earned, I was given seven dollars. So if I owe four, but I get seven, then that really means I still have three that I can go out and spend, because I'm going to take four of the seven that I had to pay off my debt, and that'll leave me with three left over that I can do something else with. So from a conceptual standpoint, thinking about money can help a lot. Just think of positive values as money that you're getting or money that you have, and negative values as money that you're spending or money that you owe. And I think you'll find that that clears it up a whole lot, um, particularly for a student who's, uh, who's kind of uh, conceptual, who likes to think in, in pictures. Now the other way to look at it, if you are the kind of person who likes rules, there really are only a couple of rules for being able to add and subtract any pair of rational numbers. The first thing you do is look at the numbers and check their signs. So check the signs of the numbers. I don't care how big they are, I don't care anything, I just want to know what their signs are, see if they're positive or negative. When that's done, if the signs are the same, you want to add their values. If the signs are different, you want to subtract their values. Once you've done the addition or subtraction, you give the answer the sign of the bigger number. The answer gets the sign of the bigger number. So, and when you do the subtraction or when you do the addition, if you're adding the adding the numbers, it doesn't matter. You're just adding. When you subtract, always subtract the easy way. What I mean by that is this: um, suppose I'm adding four plus negative eight. Yeah. Here my signs are different. I have a positive four and I have a negative eight. So my signs are different. I need to subtract their values. And what I mean by saying I subtract the easy way is I just say eight minus four because I know that. I know what eight minus four is. That's four. Then I look at my numbers and I give my answer the sign of the bigger number. My bigger number was 8, so my answer gets the sign that the 8 had, which means my answer is a negative 4. So 4 plus negative 8 is negative 4. And that's really all there is to it. There's not a whole lot of rules for that. In fact, if you have a subtraction sign or a subtraction problem, all you need to do is change the sign of the second number, and then you can go back and use the same rules for addition again. Change the sign of the second number and change subtraction to addition. If you like, I could show you that real quick. Let's take a look at a blank page here. Suppose I had negative 2 minus negative 8. So I change the sign of the second number, change subtraction to addition, and then follow the rules I had. Now my signs are different, negative 2 and positive 8, so I subtract the values. 8 minus 2 is 6. My bigger sign is positive. My bigger number is positive, sorry. So my answer is positive. So positive 6 is the answer to negative 2 minus negative 8, which is the same thing as negative 2 plus 8.